Labor Day marked the end of summer vacation and the commencement of back to school shooting season. Vice President Harris is right. We don't have to live this way. Welcome to Mama Kratz Mama Chat, part of the Demcast family of podcasts. I'm Donna Schwartz Mills with Kara Lee and Lisa Worthington of CrooksandLiars.com. And we are expecting a special guest this hour. North Dakota senatorial candidate Katrina Christensen is going to return, give us an update on how her campaign is going. Oh, oh hi, there she is. There she is. is. Katrina. The reason we've got Katrina here is we want to get a, a, a an update on how her campaign is doing. And um, Carolee, you want to introduce Katrina to us? Yeah, well, this is Katrina Christensen. She is the uh, Senate candidate in North Dakota. And she's gaining on her on Kevin Kramer, her uh, Republican opponent in the polls. And we're looking, we're hoping that, you know, you're going to, with your, all your counties tour that you just finished and everything else, that you're going to start to overtake him. So oh, with that, welcome. Could you move your, your camera a little bit farther away? Because we can't oh, see her. I'm having a little bit of trouble getting in my... Oh. Uh, the browser was like, uh, you need to ch do all of these things. And I was like, oh, okay. Oh, no. There you go. There you there. go. There you go. Um, so yeah, it's it's been wild. I think the last time we talked, I don't think we had the new polling back. No, the last time we talked, Biden was still at the top of the ticket. So Biden, we, haven't, we haven't spoken since, spoken since, since that happened. New no, it's been quick. It's been only six weeks. So I think it was, I think we spoke with you the week before uh, it happened. Yeah. 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 So we were up on TV. Uh, I think I mentioned that we were maybe doing an ad buy that was equivalent to like 4.5 million in district 45 in California. Uh -huh. So um, what we saw was that ad buy here in North Dakota gained us nine points. It cut. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah, no, I know, I know. Two hundred thousand dollars here in North Dakota goes a long way. That's yeah, fabulous. Now, is that yeah. the ad we saw, or is it a different ad? Uh, well, the grocery store ad, and did you see the bio ad with my daughter? Yes, doing the voiceover. So those were the two positive ads that we ran. Yeah, and so we got um, pulling back from Salinda Lake, uh, mm -hmm. and that was at the early the the first week of August. So that was just after Harris had become the nominee, uh -huh. and so. Obviously, things are very different right now. Um, I think if we were to poll again, we would see that it's even closer. Um, and so our plan is we're actually going to go up on TV with our awesome. first attack ad. Because um, you have to give voters a reason to fire the incumbent. Yeah, It's just mm -hmm. the nature of the beast. And so we're going to do that very soon here. It's very exciting. Um, it's a very provocative uh, attack I'm ad. Yeah, so we found someone who um, is a rancher, mm -hmm. I, I, uh, and he essentially says, uh, when a bull doesn't do its job anymore, you take it to town. And then it's <laughs> time Kevin came home. And he does it in this very, like, Yellowstone, Longmire. Uh, awesome. Yeah, it's just so good. He's so good. He says, you know, he's talking about me as the alternative and he says, you know, she wants to get to work and we haven't seen that in a long time. You know, he just holds out that whole draw. Yeah. Yeah. Rancher kind of way. So it's just, it's beautiful, but it is, it is, it is a little bit cheeky. So Love it. Um, yeah, we're everybody that's seen it really loves it. So cheeky that's is good. Yeah. 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 So we're hoping to, uh, see that that ad helps us and of course you know mixed in with that is that more per positive persuasion sure so yeah right. it's exciting and, wow. and you spent the last six weeks visiting every county well, in North dakota right I, i've been working on that since the end of may but we finished uh two weeks ago i think we finished with our last county it was grant county and uh we were in this town called carson it's just a tiny town and I thought this is unreal. 
because the downtown looks like, have you ever been to like a frontier village? Yeah. Where all the buildings look like they're from the late 1800s? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, that's their downtown. It's wow. like, like, you know, they have, they have their saloon type buildings. That's what things are in. And so it was kind of fun to see that. Um, and uh, I just thought the day that I was with my, my staff where I was like, how lucky are we that we get to see all the counties you know, all of the, we started to harvest all of the wheat um, in in August, and uh, there's all the sunflower production in North Dakota. I don't know if you all knew that. I don't um, so the fields are, are beautiful. Yeah. Um, wow. It's kind of exceptional that we get to see that. And so, uh, but it's kind of funny, really quickly, this is just inside campaign stuff. My staffer's from New Hampshire. She used to work for Senator Shaheen. Mm-hmm. And when she came to North Dakota, she could not believe there weren't any trees. <laughs> She's like, where are all the trees? You have no privacy. No privacy. <laughs> and he was like, if you had to run from the cops, they would see you. And I was like, <laughs> are you planning on committing any crimes, Katrina? Do we no, need to know? No, my staffer, right? And so yeah. Like, Is your staffer planning on committing crimes? No, or no, we- that was her first thought, you know? And so, but New yeah. Hampshire was, I think the second most tree cover in the United States, you know, after Maine and then North Dakota has the 50th. So it's quite striking for her. It's so, anyway. funny because I mean, it, the, the, the different places you go, because I, um, when I lived in San Bernardino for a couple of years and when we were looking for apartments back East, a friend of mine came with me and I of course grew up on the East coast. I grew up in New York and um, I mean, we have trees in Brooklyn, we have trees everywhere. And um, um, she in San Bernardino, of course, it depends in California where you live, but in San Bernardino, it's just kind of like mountainous and desert, desert. Yeah. There's like nothing. And and she came back to look and we were looking in Virginia and she would same thing. She was like, there are so many trees, there are trees <laughs> everywhere. And I'm like, yes, it's, it's, you know, this is the East Coast. It's Virginia. We have trees. <laughs> yeah. We yeah. can't believe it. Uh, like trees no, on I'm, every block and I'm like I know <laughs> yeah it's it's and so we we always joke whenever we see a cluster of trees we're like oh that's it that's the two percent <laughs> of tree cover from North Dakota so yeah, but it's all been, the trees yeah it's been phenomenal and I've met so many people and um I I I kind of lost track of the days, like, you know, how, oh, we only have 80 days left and then it was 70 and now we're at six. I don't know because my 60 something. Yeah. I have eight lives a day. So yesterday I went to the United Tribes Technical College Conference. I had calls. I met with new Americans in Fargo. I I mean, it was, it was, um, I filmed some more for my ad. So it's so, uh, I just, I, I live so many lives a day and it's, it's the best thing in the world. Like I, I'm having a lot of fun and, um, I feel like this ad that I was telling you about with the rancher will hopefully, um, kind of be the catalyst to get us where we want to be, which is above 45. Yeah. So going into October, it's very you seem so energized. I am today. <laughs> I, uh, you know, spending 15 hours on the campaign trail yesterday. Yeah. Today I'm home. I got to see <laughs> all my kids all awake. That was a gift. And my parents are here. Oh, so, nice. nice. Yeah, it is. It's uh, today's a good day. So, and I got to be yeah. here with you all. So oh. um, talk about we, the race. I'm uh, sure we're the first ones you want to see when you get home <laughs> after being on the road. <laughs> I, I, uh, we had a debate, too, I, I against my opponent. Yes. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. Um, uh, it was, it was interesting. So one of the things I think when we spoke before, it was six weeks ago, it could have been in, you know, a hundred years ago. Yeah. Uh, I mentioned on the stump, I talk about my opponent. He's really great at identifying problems and assigning blame, but that's really where his job stops. He doesn't either doesn't know how to fix things or is just not inclined. Yeah. And, uh, when we were debating, he kept doing that. He kept blaming um, Senator Stabenow on the farm bill or, you know, Schumer or whomever um, he could think to blame. He would. And then he would, you know, have some complaint. 
And uh, I, I said that to him. I said, you know, I got to give you a lot of credit, Senator Kramer. You are very good at identifying problems and assigning blame. And that's really where your job stops. And he got really defensive. With uh, that. Yeah. Uh, he said, well, you're right. I am because you know, these problems need to be identified and, um, and there's somebody to blame. And I thought, well, this is wonderful. Hmm. And <laughs> yeah, there's an ad. <laughs> yeah. Well, we need somebody to blame. Yeah. Well, and so we had a conversation about the debt and he's been in Congress for over 10 years. The debt has increased $12 trillion since he's been in Congress. It increased seven trillion, obviously, during the Trump presidency. And so we were having a conversation about how do you deal with that? And he had said, well, um, you know, you can't talk about Social Security and Medicare because they come at you with a hammer when in his answer to the question. And I said, well, you have to do two things, right? You have to close the loopholes on, you know, corporations that are avoiding paying taxes and the ultra wealthy, right? Like the top two percent. And then you have to grow the economy. That's really the only way that you can do that without cutting the things you don't want to cut, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, he went after me on that. That's fine. That's his thing. But then I said, okay, but you, you know, I was given the opportunity to point out he didn't say what he would cut. And so he said that he would cut mandatory spending. You'd have to look at the mandatory side of the. That's so <laughs> Medicare and Social Security on the chopping block. Wow. No. And he just like went where it went there. It. Yeah. <laughs> he just walked into it. And I was like, this is, this is, I can't believe he's not prepared for this. And so, um, it's well, he can't right. believe you were probably. Well, me, oh, I, I don't know. And so he did seem, he did seem to get a little agitated with me. He said, you know, you're running as a moderate Democrat. And I was like, oh, okay. Like, really? <laughs> why are you saying that? Like, yeah. that's not a bad thing. Um, and then we did talk about inflation. And I know that we talked about that the last time I was on. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about how there are winners and losers when it comes to inflation. There really are. Mm -hmm. I mean, economist Mark Blythe has a book coming out. It's called that. I, I, I even emailed him about how to explain a point uh, to a non-economist about yeah. um, interest rates going up versus mm -hmm. lost mm -hmm. future growth. And so that I could understand that when I was on the campaign trail talking about it. And so I talked about how the banks win with inflation. Yeah. Absolutely. It's great for them. They have really high interest rates mm -hmm. and um, you know they're gonna make their money back no matter what. Right. And I pointed out that Senator Kramer, I don't know if you're working for North Dakotans or special interests. You accepted corporate PAC money from Goldman Sachs. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, I've accepted money from all sorts of special interests. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking. I'm not kidding. He did. He listed all the special interests. And I thought, this is my point. My, you made my point. Right. And so... Um, uh, yeah, those were kind of the, my three highlights from it were you, you said you'd cut mandatory spending. Okay. And, uh, yeah, you're owned by special interests and yeah, I am running, I am running a, a really good campaign. So yeah, as a moderate yeah. Democrat, <laughs> as a moderate Democrat, and that's okay. And, <laughs> uh, this is news to you. Why? <laughs> and I see that you got endorsements from, uh, Heidi Heitkamp and uh, Byron Dorgan and uh, Kent Conrad, right? Yes. 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 So they, you know, were our former Democratic senators here in North Dakota. Senator mm -hmm. Dorgan retired in 2010, and then obviously Senator Conrad in 2012, which is the seat that Senator Heitkamp won. So um, mm -hmm. we're we're really happy to have those endorsements and their mm -hmm. wisdom um, in terms of uh, how to how to go about winning this race. Mm -hmm. So um, it's been very exciting to talk to them. Uh, Senator Conrad was on a was in a meeting with us last week with Celinda Lake, and he was talking about how that polling. You know, he's been he was in the Senate from 1986 to 2012. Right. Uh, that if we had polled later in August, right, we would have seen again that we were much closer, probably just because of the things that happened. There's more excitement. Um, 
mm -hmm. for for this election. So. Right. And, and how's I don't know if you know this or not, but are you getting some voter registration bumps from? Oh, North Dakota is so funny. We don't have voter registration. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's we, right. You don't. No, but we do have. Um, so if we talked after Kamala uh, became the nominee, so I was up in Pembina County. I think this probably would have been after that. Um, I was at this Icelandic uh, Borg house. So these Icelandic people that settled in the northeastern part of the state put together um, the money and the resources to build a home, essentially, for people who couldn't take care of themselves. Mm -hmm. So it's not quite a nursing home, but it's where people who don't need a lot of care can go um, that just need a little bit of help. So it was their 75th anniversary. I went up there and um, met with people. The, and it was really cool to be up there. It's a beautiful area of North Dakota, of course. Mm -hmm. um, and this woman was leaving the event behind me and she ran up to me and she's like, oh, are you Katrina Christensen? And I said, yes. And she said, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a Republican. But I agree with you. Kevin Kramer hasn't done anything for us. Oh. And even though we don't agree on everything, I'm going to vote for you. Wow. And so great. it's those sorts of interactions that mm -hmm. we've been having, um, you know, over the last two, two and a half months as we've kind of gotten that, that name recognition up. Yeah. Um, so it's, and we're winning over those votes. We know we need to get those split ticket voters. Mm-hmm. And it's exciting to see that. And so um, I think this is this is the persuasion period of the campaign. And it, it's just really exciting. Sounds like you're killing it. It does. <laughs> Sounds great. <laughs> uh, I, I, I mean, there are good days, right? There are really good days. And um, today is, as a, I mean, just I think I'll have uh, Carrie send you the ad and maybe you can share it with your, your viewers. I would love I don't to know. see it. We would love to do that. Listening. Yeah. But um, it is, it is, and it is, I mean, we are, we are targeting that split ticket voter in that, that ad. So yeah, it's yeah I'd love to see that. That would yeah. be awesome. That would be, and that would be would awesome. absolutely share it. No question. So what, would it be cool if you could get Tim Walls up there <laughs> to campaign well, with you? Funny. I mean, it's so wild. So I actually met him last November. He uh -huh. came to North Dakota's Burdick dinner. So oh. you we used to have a senator named Senator Quentin Burdick. He was in the Senate for like a long time, like I think over 30 years. Mm -hmm. And he was Democratic. And so we have this dinner in honor of him. And he, Tim Walls came and spoke. And I thought, <laughs> this guy is so good at communicating. Yeah. yeah. Like he just got it. I yeah. thought, this is what people must have seen in George W. Bush that I didn't see. You know, I was too young, maybe, I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I got to sit with him that evening and I met him and he's originally from Nebraska. So am I, uh -huh. he's born in West Point, Nebraska. And I was born in Pender, Nebraska, which is 19 miles apart on oh, highway. Wow. Yeah. And so anyway, I just, um, uh, you know, I get to use that when I'm stumping now, I'm like, Oh, I'm originally from Nebraska, 19 miles from our next vice president. So yeah, nice. <laughs> yeah. exciting. Nice. It's, we, there have been, articles about will it drive up voter turnout on the east so you know mm -hmm. we share a border with minnesota we get mm -hmm. lots of minnesota news and so will that hopefully i i hope it will help out our oh, turnout yeah. that would be awesome me too yeah me too yeah yeah definitely well i don't i guess i've kind of all yeah, we, asked all we my don't questions want to here. keep you on a day <laughs> that you have ostensibly off with your family well, I, I, it's, it's never off right i mean you guys are all moms you get that i mean i've got yeah. two loads of laundry and uh i forgot to get toilet paper when i went to the store so now i have to yeah. go back and get toilet paper. <laughs> uh, senators are so dressed I'm, like us <laughs> we're, we're just regular people that's right and so we forget we forget yeah. the, the items yeah no it's going really well we're just really hoping that we can um you know continue to raise the money to get our message out there, which has been working. So Linda Lake, when we, when we talked about the poll, she's like, keep doing what you're doing. It's working. It's amazing. Well, she's, so. she is the person to take advice from. She yeah. is. So that's awesome. Absolutely. I'm, glad she, I'm glad she's working with your campaign. So yeah. great. I know. It's, 
it's surreal to see her being interviewed by other people because I'm like, I've talked to her. <laughs> Well, someday when they swear you into the Senate, we're I gonna, know we talk to her. <laughs> we're going to do the same thing, and uh, and pretty, and it's going to be Tim Walls that swears you into the Senate. So that's so right. That would be very exciting, and right? you can remind him. You know, we were <laughs> over nineteen <laughs> miles apart. Well, I and he he. Uh, I mean, he moved around in yeah. Nebraska, but I I I stayed where I was born until I you know went off into the world and landed here, which has been mm -hmm. great. So I'm very, I'm the luckiest person in the world to be running this race. So yeah, Aww, so I that. hope your luck continues all the way through I'll November think. and that uh, yeah. we're behind you. As we are, yeah, we are. North Dakotans are lucky too. Yeah. yeah. I, I appreciate your support. I appreciate you letting me give you the update here. Like I said, it's, it's, um, it's going very well. And so all right. well, keep when up you the win, you come work. back. <laughs> yes, yes that was so exciting. I don't know that I could smile anymore if I want. <laughs> you don't have to. You don't yes, know. you can. Uh, we know I you can. can. I'm right now. It's so exciting. So. Okay. okay. All right. Well, thank you guys you have a great for... weekend. Thank you. You too. You too. Thank you. All right. Okay. Bye. Bye. I hate talking about school shootings. I do too. I, I, and I, the one thing I will say about this one that I'm glad for is that they're holding the parents responsible because it is just amazing to me that any parent would give a 14 year old an AR-15. Why would you give a 14 year old an AR-15? Especially after the FBI has already, already. visited you. Right, for and making threats. For making I mean, threats to shoot up a school. Right. And there's, there's reports that there was domestic violence, that there's drugs. I mean, it's the more I hear about this, the more I feel like the parents ought to be in jail and the kid not facing a life sentence. I mean, this is one where I think him um, being tried as an adult maybe isn't the right move, you know? I don't think um, so either. I, I, I think if he's 14 years old and he's lived the kind of life that it sounds like he's lived, with domestic violence and his mother being a drug addict and all the rest of it, uh, you know, it's not surprising to me that uh, he is acting out, although this way is a terrible way um, to act out. But I, I, I do, I'm grateful that the authorities are holding the parents responsible because that's who needs to be held responsible. Yeah. The father- I, um, I, I am of the, uh, I before, we learned even as much as we did about the family and where he got the weapon and all that. I, I really, really bristle. No, really, no matter the crime of a 14 year old being tried as an adult. I mean, it's one thing if they're 16 or 17 and even then I have a bit of an issue because I mean, you're not fully developed. Your brain's not fully developed the more we learn about it, but to charge a 14 year old as an adult in a crime like this is, I think really morally questionable. I agree. I think it is. Um, and I've changed and my then, mind. And then of course, the more we learn, the more we find out who's really responsible for this, despite who pulled the trigger. Um, I oh mean, my God. I mean, supposedly they moved around. They didn't have money. The father buys the kid an expensive gun. Right. And, you know, I, I was pleased to see him charged with second degree murder, the father. Yeah. They've got a warrant out for the mother, too. Do it's they not, really? Good. Yeah, it's not just the father. And the, to, to Elise's point, we had a school shooting in Oxnard. Um, back in 2008, and it was a kid, a 14 year old kid who shot another 14 year old kid who he felt he was threatened. The, the one he, who was shot was, um, trans curious. Mm -hmm. Um, and so there was an element of homophobia Bullying. involved yeah. in the shooting. And, um, I, at the time was literally, I was furious. I mean, I had a daughter in high school. I, I don't want school shootings in my neighborhood. And I felt like, yeah, try that kid as an adult. That was, and I, 
I evolved on that point over time too. Um, it, it, and it was around that case. I had a lot of people that I, I wrote around about it on my blog. I had a lot of people that came and said, you're wrong. You know, these kids, their brains are not fully formed. And the more I read about it, the more I agree. I mean, they, 14 years old, he's been in a, a shitty environment growing up with crappy parents and his brain is not fully formed. Which is why there should be age restrictions on firearms. Amen. Well, could, could, can we just start by getting rid of AR-15s altogether? Yeah. yeah. Wow. Know, nobody needs it. These I mean, there are, are age restrictions on firearms, aren't there? Like, I mean, a 14 year old can't go in and buy an AR-15 even in Georgia, can they? No. It's, it's, so it there was, is that technically an age restriction on purchasing a firearm, but they're in, but you know, the father is the one that purchased it, right? Also, there's so. no requirement that they lock the guns up. Oh, right. sure. I mean, you know. And why? there's open carry. So yeah. uh, until he fired the weapon, well, I don't think he's he would have been allowed to carry. <clears throat> Again, you know, like we're talking about the 14-year-old is technically, right. I think even in Georgia, <laughs> not allowed to walk around with an AR-15. But the dad sure is. Yeah. And this was the second day of school. Right. And in the kid on the first day of school, I don't think for Georgia, was it? It was. It was the second day that he was in school. He'd been in for, oh, that he'd been in that school. Yeah. It was his oh, second. okay. He'd yes, yes, that yes. School. That's right. So on him. the first day, he was feeling anxiety and went home mm -hmm. and then came back the next day with, with this gun. And, you know, tragically, now we've lost, you know, two teachers and two students yep. and, and nine, nine others that are. Inward. Yeah, injured. And uh, it didn't have to be that way. It, but even if he had... But you guys, Jim, J.D. Vance says it does have to be that way. Oh, a fact of life, that idiot says. And I just, it makes me want to slap him. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, everything he says makes me want to slap him. I know, him. right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> But, but to say that school shootings are a fact of life is just BS. But, but even like getting rid of AR-15s, which is something that, that Harris wants to do, yeah. would, have, would have changed the outcome on this, I think, because, really? and I guess not just AR-15s, but in general, you know, high-speed firing weapons, whatever they're called, uh, you know, because he, he surrendered to a resource officer. Yeah. Like as soon as he was confronted and, and, and kudos to the whole school for all the things that they did to keep their students and teachers safe. This was not an Ovalde situation. Not at all. And they had these, like, they just implemented the system where on their badges, they yeah, had a panic buttons, a panic button on their badges that they could push. So the, that got pushed, that triggered the resource officers and the police. And the resource officers confronted him and he, he surrendered the weapon and, and was cooperative from that point forward. There's also the report from his aunt who said that he'd been asking for mental health counseling and was not getting it. I believe that. I do. I believe that too. And that breaks my heart. And that's why I don't think he should be tried as an adult. For all of those reasons, I think he should be tried as a juvenile and his parents should be tried. And, you know, this is clearly a failure. It's a and I, I'm sure they have a lot of excuses for why, whatever it is, you know, that he, the there is no saying. excuse for not keeping your guns locked up. There is no excuse. Well, and worse yet, he was given that gun as a Christmas present. I don't care. Okay, fine. So give, uh, give your kid an AR-15 for Christmas, but don't give him free access to it all the time. I don't think yeah, they, like there's even the ways AR. like but but some whoever's gonna do that is not gonna you know think logically i guess but no i mean i don't know and the whole thing just is a mess but my heart goes out to all the people that are injured and the people that lost their their children and and why that i don't know if you've seen the picture of the the math teacher with his two beautiful daughters no, uh, and his wife. Well, I've it, seen the picture of the math teacher, but not not with his family. Oh, it's that'll just 
rip your heart out. Honestly. But I've seen the texts of the big sister of, of, of the young the young black kids saying, you know, my my brother has autism. He may have wandered away. He may be um, agitated. If you approach him, please be gentle. Um, you know, and that's the kid that CNN saw fit to put up as the as the shooter. <gasps> yeah. I know. Nice job, CNN. Right. And he was you know, a victim. He was a so, Yeah, he's a victim. And so was the other kid. And, you know, it was a. Uh, just. We have to make this stop. We, we have to make this stop. I mean, like Kamala Harris said, it does not have to be this way. Yeah. I don't care what J.D. Vance says. It does not have to be it this way. It does not have to be this way. This is not a fact of life. None of the three of us grew up with this happening. Can, you, ima can you imagine a panic button on your school ID? First of all, when we grew up, I, I barely had, I didn't even have a school ID in middle school. I did have one in high school, but I mean, like, this well, is, I think it's just the teachers. No, just the teachers that. have the panic button yeah, on their the on their oh. school ID that they wear around right. their neck. Oh, yeah. But, you so, know, they've hardened the security. I certainly do not remember having to have security guards in elementary school. You know. Well, yeah. Did you see that the doors to the school were self locking doors? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I I that immediately they've sent done me back. all the hardening. You know, yeah. when, again, J.D. Vance saying schools are soft targets and they have to get hardened. This school was hardened. It was hardened. And this kid still managed to get a large gun onto the campus and and shoot up a bunch of people. I mean, it it's just unfathomable. It really is the the whole thing and and the issue i have with ar-15s is you don't have to be brave to use one of those no right because they just they're just weapons of mass destruction and death and indiscriminate yeah, yeah exactly you don't have to like aim it you just have to pull the trigger and shower whoever with bullets you know yeah. Supreme Court. But, i mean do you hear the, the story that. we could have bump stocks um oh, god I know. Fuck Clarence Thomas. Yeah, you got the first one in. Yeah, <laughs> it's okay. It's deserved. <laughs> that's kind of that's kind of a um, evergreen comment. Yeah, it it it's is evergreen swear. <laughs> it is. <laughs> but it needed to be said. Yeah. I mean, I I don't know how Jenny too. I don't know how he lives with himself. I really don't. With every child that's lost in one of these shootings i'm sure he has an excuse you know i mean but the fact of the matter is that if the kid didn't have an ar-15 that when it wouldn't have happened he wouldn't if he didn't have access to it it wouldn't have happened and here we are again right yeah. so yeah that's that's kind of the crappy way to start out isn't it <laughs> but um i mean there is good news we don't have just all bad um that you know harris wall's campaign just raked in a shit ton of cash i don't know 361 if you... million for oh wow i i was still at the 200 month. something million wow in okay. one month. that was that was harris and other democratic candidates it's kind okay. of a aggregate yeah for the democratic awesome so they have 404 million dollars on hand in cash right. on hand this is after this huge media buy that they right. that they've placed for the rest of the election and mm -hmm. i'm guessing that they'll they'll raise a billion listen if my texts are any any indication oh, i get three or four texts from harris for president every single freaking day whether oh. i want them or not how many i get like 41 <laughs> i get i get so many i'm on we'll like so many i have to text stop to so many people all these I, different packs send me yeah so i don't get those because i stopped those like after the midterms but I, the only ones i allow through are harris for president right. And, sure the and there's still a lot of them it is um 
they do have what they do have on hand is a hundred million more than the Trump campaign has. Yeah, it, no. Yes, they do. <laughs> yeah, and the, that's isn't that too bad? No, <laughs> but okay, I got mean, plenty of dark money spending. You know, oh yeah, it's not reported by the campaign. They do, but what's interesting is they're having to spend it in places they don't want to spend it. Yeah. So they're having to spend in Texas. They're having to spend in Florida. They're having to spend in Isn't that nice. Florida. I know. I'm <laughs> loving how they're spending in Texas. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So yeah, and, and how is and Florida in play? That's crazy. Right. Was, and and an they abortion. There's an abortion amendment. Yeah. On the ballot in Florida. And I really don't think people understand. I was we were commenting on this Donna and I earlier this week. How pissed off women are. Like, I don't think that, I, surely the press doesn't understand it. And you'd think they would. You'd think so. You but they, think. they really, if they do, they're not, they're playing coy or something and deciding that, that they shouldn't be reporting on it. I don't well, know. Well, they're playing something. Yeah, you know. I, well, but I have a whole totally rant on that. If we're <laughs> they're playing Republican is what they're doing. They're Could right. you believe that editorial... From Salzburger in the Washington Post. In the Washington Post. Right. Wait, he Salzburger ordered... did a editorial in the Washington Post. Yeah. yeah. Isn't he a Times guy? Yeah. He, he is the, he's the Times. publisher of the Times. Wait. Yeah. So what did he do in the? How did I miss that? Okay. Whoa. Now I have to go read. Excuse me while I go find this. It's it's about the duties of the press. Right. Oh. And how they are doing just their utmost oh. to do fair and objective journalism. Uh -huh. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, right. What so I wrote my own op-ed yesterday and it was about it and it questioned why it was that the media is suddenly ignoring well, not suddenly, they've they've ignored forever uh, Trump's clear cognitive decline. Yeah. That mm -hmm. he is, he makes no sense. The things he says don't I mean, you, it's just word salad. And um, I, I followed through on Greg Chuck's, excuse me, my tongue seems to be Greg tangled Sargent. up today. Greg, Greg Sargent's Sargent, yeah. Yeah, article about this, where he basically took 10 headlines about Biden and reworked them to be about Trump. Yeah. And, and yet there's nothing that they've, yeah. they've done with regard to Trump. And it, it yeah. really is infuriating because age was such a big deal it suddenly, was a huge big deal and suddenly it doesn't matter right well you know but, and but they're trying such to a spring a chicken character. compared to biden you know it's really you know you don't have to worry about it with trump right and mike he's so much younger oh yeah right three years uh -huh. the thing so is, he's now the oldest candidate who's ever run for president hello but he's never he, he's never made sense he's for for the when he was president he had word salads all over the place this is like you know the cognitive decline thing is you know is he is he that much worse than he was when he was president yeah he is though he is though <laughs> if you go back i mean like how much worse could he be in, go back and look at the press conferences the COVID press conferences yeah. just pick one from yeah. 2020 and then look at the shit that he says today and it's it's 10 times worse look at the 20 article campaign. of all people yeah um, when msnbc went off about it and said it's a false equivalence he said on the one hand they ignore the shit that comes out of his mouth but hey kamala you know changed her mind on fracking so and they're deal. gonna make a big deal out of the fracking because they got nothing they got right. nothing you know, so it's false equivalence. They want, I mean, the fracking thing is meant to drive a wedge in with the progressive mm -hmm. left as opposed to the center left. And, right. you know, and then the other thing that happened was that she uh, split from Biden on the amount of capital gains tax right. that she, she wants 28%. He wanted a 36.9 or something percent uh, on capital gains. And she said, explained that it's because she wants to encourage investment in business. So, you know, I, I mean, she's got a degree in economics, things. doesn't she? I mean, in the end, if Congress sent her, if she's president and Congress sent her a 39.8% capital gains tax, she'd sign it. She's going to yeah. sign it. Yeah. She also unveiled proposals to encourage small business 
that even Fox Business channel was going, these are good ideas. Hey, <laughs> did they really? Yeah. So, well, and I mean, they're pretty simple, like, like the startup, uh, deduction being $25,000 startup deduction. Yeah. That's 10 times what the deduction currently is. And, and honestly, that's crazy to the $5,000 deduction is crazy it's because little. it's not help out. anything because yeah. the average startup does spend $40,000 to start. Oh my God. So it is common sense. Right. So, I mean, they are good ideas and they mm -hmm. should be implemented and you know the rest of it uh you know all the the wedge driving and everything is a different issue entirely but that but the thing is the press is bent on um tearing down kamala harris on to form the scale yeah to form some kind of equivalence with donald trump even though there should be zero equivalence with donald trump none zero what none whatsoever and that to me is extraordinarily frustrating. And, you know, the fact that they actually ignore all the bizarre things that he says and they, and basically shrug it off. Like, oh, he said another bizarre thing. That's so easy to do. It's so easy to do, but it shouldn't be. It's like Donald Trump says something ridiculous and it's dog bites man. Hmm. Yeah. You know? And so it is just much easier for them to make news out of some perceived misstep yeah. by the Democrats, whether right. it was Joe Biden when he was the candidate or Kamala Harris. So you guys, do you think the debate is going to happen? Yes. Yeah, I do. Okay. So. I, I And I think that the two things that frustrate me are, um, number one, that uh, there's no fact checking again. Mm -hmm. And number two, I mean, and she can fact check, yes. She, but then she spends all of her time right. fact, -checking. Checking, fact yeah. checking and not getting her that's own not ideas her job. across. Yeah, and I think that's that's part of what derailed Biden. Mm -hmm. Was I think it is too? Was that Trump was doing his uh, the gish gallop? the gish gallop and right. just the fire hose the falsehoods right and biden had to think you know and the look on his face while he was thinking was um it wasn't even thinking i think he was in. like horrified like yeah I, you know why are you saying these things that are so objectively false yeah yeah it, and it, i i think he was like genuinely horrified that nobody was correcting that that it was just right there. and i think he didn't know where to start with, yeah. with how to how to counter all that the, in the, two that, minutes the you know. two minutes yeah. the number of lies yeah. and that's the method and so i really hope that she's got a good strategy i hope she just says okay grandpa and like just keep yeah. talking yeah like and, she, and yeah. tom nichols can go fuck himself oh yeah Yes, he can. He is such you know? a piece of shit. He told me to unfollow him. He's like, unfollow <laughs> if you don't want. Unfollow me if, well, there's going to be more unsolicited advice, so you can unfollow me now. And I'm like, well, fuck you. I'm going to follow you just to do. <laughs> just to aggravate you. I'm going to follow you and was, react to you. What he did was complain about the, the, um, the uh, I'm, I'm speaking. speaking. He right. hopes he doesn't do the I'm speaking thing. Yeah, right. because I guess white men see any woman just asserting her rights as a display of anger. Oh, yeah. And he got trounced. People were like, what do you expect? What is she supposed to do when people talk over her? Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know? Right. Yeah. And, when you know, being I, disrespected. You know, what, what is she supposed to say? Like, just allow it? Then she looks weak. Look, I know people like it, but I hope she doesn't do it. <laughs> Yeah, people like it because they like seeing her not be cowed down. That's you know? right. And she and, and I mean, people like seeing men being told that they cannot like roll over women like that. Exactly. And yet ding, here's ding, Tom ding, Nichols. Ding, ding. And and here's Tom Nichols saying, Well, I don't like I don't like seeing it. <laughs> and all these women are saying, Well, tough shit. Right. 
And he was like, of life, my and friend. He, and then he doubles down on it. And then he's like, for everybody who didn't like when I said this, I said it and I meant it. And this is why I meant it. And he went all over. He, he dove right back in. And I'm like, what are you, a fucking moron? What? It's so stupid. Yeah. Well, you just just move on, back away from that stance and get, you know, go back to being Radio Free Tom with your cats and, you know, just go ahead. Show you know? me an example of mansplaining. Yes! <laughs> exactly. What a prick. <laughs> and, I know that that was like, I couldn't believe he said that. It's like, what are you thinking? That this And, that, and who the fuck asked him? I'm like, I, said, I said to him, I'm like, I'm sure. Kamala Harris is like really dying for your advice. I'm sure. Right. I'm so sure she's going to read you and be like, oh, good idea. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> this is on par with the men who complain about women's voices. Yeah. Right. I, yeah. I, I yeah. heard so many complaints about Hillary's voice and yeah. I, there's nothing wrong with her voice at all. I mean, she has an alto, a, a pleasant alto I voice. Her voice. And, and as does Kamala Harris yeah. also have a pleasant Well, voice. it's the same as the complaint about her laugh. Yeah, right. Oh, yes. God bless yeah, her right. and her how laugh. How dare she laugh? Also, how dare she not smile? Right. <laughs> I, I mean, there's... <laughs> you can't win. There, right. You can't. So don't bother. So, right. so that kind of advice from Tom Nichols just shows me kind of the... You know, I mean, he, he'll probably vote for her anyway, but it's, I don't know, it's pretty okay, sad. Let him vote for Trump. I, like, I don't. I, he's not going to vote for Trump. He's not voting for Trump. Yeah. He, he does see the danger of Trump and he has been an anti-Trump voice. But this is one of those situations where he thinks that he's going to, you know. But he can't go so far as into his idea point. of what a woman leader yeah. should be. And she's doing just fine as a leader. I mean, yeah. I. I don't think we've, we still thinks we need him. Right. And that we're, we're dying for his guidance. I don't think we've talked since she did the interview with Dana Bash, have we? And, and just, I, I want to just leave this, her cut off. We did talk about Dana Bash oh, we did. last week. Did we? Yeah. Oh, was I not? Oh, I was saying here. Was you I, oh, that's right. Time. See, and I'm brain dead. So there, yeah. there you go. But we did. But, we did but, talk but, about it. That's okay. But, you can bring that back up. I mean, her I, was, I missed it. I was sick. Yeah, I didn't actually watch it. I only watched clips from it. Um, oh, but, I watched the whole thing. I did too. But when she um, when she cut Dana Bash off with that question. question, yeah, about that was so perfect. It I was. mean, that was like like absolute control of that interview. Yeah. And that's what I hope she does in the debate. I mean, I really hope she just dismisses stupid yeah. questions. Like this is a stupid question. Move on mm -hmm. but, and, and let him rattle about it. You know, just like with that answer, no matter what she does, the press is going to be pissed off about something. Well, and so that, at what point do you say that the press is, is irrelevant? You know, um, yeah. Dave Weiner, who is somebody that I followed forever for years and years. Who he's a tech guy. He's not a a, a politician. Dave Weiner. Mm -hmm. He, uh, you know, on threads every day posts a you know this is your reminder to ignore the New York Times, <laughs> and, and then he'll do the same thing: ignore CNN, ignore yeah. the Washington Post, you know? <laughs> and everything. So I mean, he's basically declaring war on the the Beltway Press and saying yeah. enough already because. They don't report objectively. Yeah. If they were object objective, we'd have stories about Trump's lunacy. Well, didn't Stephanie rule apparently? Where did I where did I see that? That was like, today. That was today. That, that was today. Yeah. Uh, apparently, morning. I want to go back and watch it. Apparently, went went absolutely apeshit over um the, the press's double standards and treatment. Uh, well, or or non-treatment of, of non-addressing um, just what we were talking about, Trump's cognitive decline, his, his, his absolute inability to put a sentence together. Well, yes. I mean, in part, I mean, it was put on such stark display when he was asked when he, I can't believe he actually showed Child up in the economic forum and tried to right. answer questions by people okay. who know anything about economics. Like they, but they don't. That economic forum 
was Republican. Right, right, right. But they were asking questions. Right, but there are people who know, like they they know what capital gains are and they know what the stock market does and they understand, you know, financial words that I don't. (laughs) They know the tariffs are not going to create this great big pool of money that's going to pay for child care. But Trump doesn't understand no. well, anything. And so they even even the dumbed down questions they tried to ask him, he doesn't, he... It was word salad. I mean, it was it, total it, it, word salad. It, there was nothing that made sense about it. But I at can't all, believe but, he, sh- he like agreed to show up. Even though they were Republican, friend, you know, Trump they were, they were, they were wealthy Republicans, yeah. is what they were. They were so, good people. Did it, did it, did the it, answer was word salad, but but it, with regard to tariffs, they there is a contingent of the hard right, yeah, who wants to abolish the income tax. Oh, right, right, of course, and they want to tariff. tariff across. The These board. are the isolationist, yeah, uh, you know, billionaires, people like Charles Koch. Right. People, you know, they they want tariffs to replace the income tax because that is inherently not progressive. They 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 do how and I was gonna say but but there's and mm-hmm. what they ended up doing was giving us commercial after commercial after commercial. Right. Yeah, for right. why Grandpa Trump is absolutely off his rocker. And yeah. incapable of speaking, doesn't understand what any words mean. And they, <laughs> I mean, it's it's just, it, it no, I know you're right. Them. Well, and speaking of economic policy, mm-hmm. this week Bloomberg said that yeah. the Harris Walls policies are better for the economy. That Trump would crash the economy, would crash mm-hmm. the economy. Right. And you had over a hundred CEOs today, including yep. the the CEO of Yelp, really, and mm-hmm. who endorsed, came out and endorsed Harris. Oh, right. I didn't know that. Yes, yep. yeah, that was a Today thing, and yes, and you have seen Republicans like Liz Cheney and Same Rep- um, okay, yeah, uh-huh. Jimmy yeah. McCain. Jimmy and, McCain, who is now a registered Democrat. Right. McC- M- John McCain's son. <laughs> if only we could make Megan McCain go away. Registered Democrat. It's a great day for John McCain. <laughs> yeah. And and Liz Cheney, you know, we disagree with 95% of her policies, but the the woman has guts and courage. Oh, yeah. There's. Her. No doubt about that. She does. And And the thing is, is this isn't a policy thing for her. This is a principle thing for her. This is a a survival of the nation thing for her. As it 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 is, as it it should be for the rest of us. Yeah. As it should be for all of us. I agree. Um, And and this is, um, yeah, it's a different... You know, we, we, the last few elections have had us so on the brink in a way that, that when I first started voting, we didn't have to think about. I think it's going to be like this for the next couple of decades. Yeah. How many cycles? Because it's it's not Trump. No, if only it were, if only only we, if if only it was embodied in that one guy, but the fact that. But what we're going to get next time is going to be somebody like Josh Hawley or uh, Tom Cotton, right? right? Who it, it, who are the smarter than Trump together? Yeah, but have no charisma, right? Um, but the Republican Party is a fully paid for subsidiary, yeah, of Vladimir Putin now. Vladimir right. Putin, yeah, and and if you don't believe that, look at the DOJ indictment this week. I think we've only got the tip of the iceberg right now. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know we only have the tip, right? Of the so, so we have, um, you know, people like Tim Pool and Benny Johnson in the podcast, you know, and they're they're all denying, they're all claiming that they were victims, but they weren't victims. They knew what they were doing, 
and the indictment spells that out. Oh, so they've been indicted in the DOJ. They, they have not they been indicted. Them. That they they are unnamed. Uh, you know, like in the indictment, there are the unnamed one. conspirators or unnamed. Um, I don't know if they're conspirators, but they they were unnamed. Um, unnamed uh, commentators. You know, they, they were yeah, given they, names. They say unnamed this person or unnamed that person, right. and then and then they would be told by these Russians what to to talk about and how uh, to talk about it. And they were perfectly willing to do that. I mean, they were, they, you guys, they made a hundred thousand dollars a week. These guys, a week, a, a week. week. Tell me they don't know where that money's coming from. Right. I mean, I did they was... just think it was we manna get that from, from this heaven? Podcast? Hmm? What? Do we get that from this podcast? <laughs> no. <laughs> we're, we, but we have full my, editorial control. <laughs> I haven't gotten a check from Soros in a while, come to think of it. Have you gotten one ever? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> so, yeah, $100,000 a week. And they just thought, Jesus. what, it was manna from heaven? They thought yeah. <laughs> rich Republicans. So all the anti-Ukraine shit that they spewed out. And oh, yeah. Else, that was crazy. all Russian yeah. propaganda. And it and in the DOJ indictment, it makes it clear that it was meant to bolster Trump. I mean, mm -hmm. that was that was their preferred candidate. So yeah. to put out the Russian messages and bolster Trump. Yeah, and no I think we've just seen the very tiny tip of the iceberg of where yeah. this is going. You know, as yeah. frustrated as we all are with the attorney general, Mm -hmm. There is so much that going on busy. that we don't know about. That right. dude is busy. I'm sorry. I, I, I refuse to hate Merrick Garland the way everybody else does. Yeah. I just refuse <laughs> because yeah. I just, I, I defer to how much must be happening that I just can't possibly have access yeah. to um, yeah. that. I'm like, you know, I'm just going to assume he's busy trying to make sure that an election happens and that what happened on January 6th doesn't happen again yeah. and that we are safe from people like Putin. Right. I am, I am just, a, I, I have faith that that's where his, his heart and considerable talent is just because he's not necessarily a tiger. Um, I am, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna hate on him. <laughs> Um, yeah. Oh, just because I don't know. How can I know? That's and, true. And then stuff like this comes out and I'm like, not doing nothing. <laughs> right. Well, I just, I'm anxious to see more. Yeah. <laughs> I want more. And it, interestingly, Tim Poole and Benny Johnson both immediately came out with statements that said they were victims. They, they, you know, they didn't have so anything. They were named. They, no, they were not, but they were not saying they're cooperating. You know how, you know, Aren't how they identifying they words indictments, they word things like this company that's based in this place incorporated on this date yeah. is, uh, employed people, person one, person two, person three. Well, the okay. journalists were pretty quick to identify the company. Right. So it was tenant I, media. Okay that which is now apparently been dissolved, but yeah, it, yeah, that, it was that. Tenet Media and they employed these uh Six. this group of people. So yeah, okay. Tim Poole and Minnie Johnson come out immediately with the statements that they were victims, that they had total editorial control, which they, they didn't because yeah. and and so on, and then deleted their statements like the next day. Huh. Because I'm sure their lawyer said, shut up. Shut up. Stop. Yeah. <laughs> Don't even admit that you're part of this, dude. <laughs> but, you know, the Internet's forever. So we have screenshots of that. Yeah. Everybody's got screenshots. So, yeah. What a bunch of maroons. I know. I, I'm just anxious <laughs> to see where this goes. Dan Bongino, who's, yeah. who is connected to Janie Thomas, came out and, and warned people against these schemes which tipped off a couple of Republican strategists nice. that Bongino is probably involved too. Yeah. And yeah, so I, I think we're going to get a lot more news. Oh, that doesn't mean he's involved. That just means he's looking out for his fellow conservatives. Carol, you're Man so Bongino has never looked out for anybody but himself. You're so, you're so cynical. Come on. 
He's just a nice guy. Speaking of Vinny, Ginny Thomas. She's <laughs> <laughs> uh, back in the news again. Publica. Is she? Oh, really? Well, you guys are filling me in. You know, I mean, so this is what happens. I get COVID and I lose, you know. I know. Well, I hear you. Anyway, yeah, she's so, so, so grateful. Oh, so grateful. So grateful. We're filling the sails of so many judges. <gasps> yeah, because they're op opposing Supreme Court reform. Yeah. So she sent it, fired off a text being so, so, so grateful for that. Oh. And this is the this the person that she sent it to called uh, Elena Kagan treasonous yeah. for saying that yeah. uh, that she thought that some court reforms were necessary. Oh my goodness! I can imagine what she is saying about Ketanji Brown Jackson. I, I don't. Oh, I, don't I, I don't even want. But, but I mean, in my head. Justice Jackson has been out there basically saying, yeah, we need court reforms. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We need them. Yeah. So, you know, and, and this whole, so there's a lot of rhetoric going on about this. So mm -hmm. the rhetoric goes like this. They will destroy the court if it's expanded <laughs> as if it's never been expanded before. Right. right. It's I mean, it's been point. expanded several times, expanded, contracted and re-expanded. I think what they mean is it will destroy their supermajority. Right. It will exactly. what? I'm sorry. Destroy their supermajority. Oh, yeah. They won't have the control that they have. Yeah, it'll destroy their power. Yeah. Meaning hers and hers and her best friends. Yes. Right. <laughs> exactly. My so, best friend. so anyway, yeah, Jenny Thomas, she's everywhere and nowhere all at once. So unreal. I know, right? Oh, and just to switch gears completely for a <laughs> second, have you seen the the uh, reproductive freedom bus tour that launched in Palm Beach? <laughs> oh, around Mar-a-Lago. Talked briefly mm -hmm. about how Florida is, <clears throat> mm -hmm. and. Uh, the, the the Harris Walls campaign fully are are taking advantage of it. They've got a reproductive freedom bus. Yeah, yeah. and it's it's a beautiful big bus with oh, reproductive yeah. freedom and Harris Walls and all that on the side. And they're touring Florida and, and they buzzed around Mar-a-Lago. Oh yeah, <laughs> and I I just saw a bunch of polls today and. Um, like the Democrat, Debbie McCarcel Powell mm -hmm. is within um, three points oh, God. of Rick Scott. So, and again, I don't, I don't know that pollsters are uh, taking into account the, the um, intensity with which women are pissed off. <laughs> well, so, if, if the last four years or a couple of years have been any indication, they're not. Right. We don't get no, it. Nobody thinking counts it's us. going to die down because it's not an issue anymore. I mean, they, they do seem to be at a point where they figured out Republican uh, intensity, but I, I don't think they figured out women. I, I just no. don't. So they're underestimating, in my opinion, the, who's going to turn out. I, and I'm not saying that to be overconfident. I know that this election is going to be a close one that all the swing states are, you know, squeaky, squeaky yeah. right now. Yeah. But I, I think the intensity of women and their frustration at having their rights taken away. And I mean, now we're to the point where in Louisiana, Miffa Prestone or it, the other one, the other one. <laughs> oh, the one that stops clotting. Yes. Right. That that's now in case of hemorrhaging. That's right. been taking off the pre that's been taken off the pre the um pregnancy carts in hospitals. Right. 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 So, so now now the GOP is not um content to lie about the fact that you know by saying, you know, oh there's abortion all the way up until the moment of birth. They're not content with accusing us of killing babies once they've been born, which is of course a humongous lie. Um now they're content, you know, they're perfectly fine killing mothers yeah. once the baby's been born. Or, right. or that's fine with them. Women who've had a miscarriage. 
or women who've had a miscarriage. Yeah. Letting them bleed out. There's no, you know, we're fine with that. Yeah. That's it's, fine. It's, uh, I mean, we're expendable. Mm -hmm. A fact of life as JD Vance would say. Oh, sure. So, so that's not the facts of life I used to watch on TV. You know, he, yeah. that guy is so creepy. <laughs> right. the, he is so obsessed with women and reproduction and it, it, it's creepy. He's playing to the manosphere. I get that. But, you know, the incels and all that. But but it's just creepy. Well, it's and creepy. then, you know, you heard what he said about child care, too. Yes. Yeah. Grandma, yes. just ask grandma and grandpa. Grandma and grandpa, step on up. Does it, it doesn't matter if you don't have a grandma or grandpa living in the same town as you. It doesn't matter if you're right. grandma or I'm grandpa. Sure you know, that's a like, that would um, be a source of free child care. Yeah. Right? doesn't right. matter how many kids. Lots of aunts and uncles who would love to, you know, have to take the care of. Part of that is he didn't, he didn't especially like Mima raising him. So right. I don't, I don't, don't quite understand what it's the not policy that's yeah. not policy that's it's not, not policy. policy it's it's not it's it's i, I don't i don't know it's what something it is. else I, I don't know what it is well we will have lots of time to talk about that i'm sure he will have more to say in the coming weeks <laughs> <laughs> but we are are we gonna get advanced walls time. today <laughs> we are out of time um that is our show for this week. We are off next week, so we'll be back in a couple on mamacrats.buzzsprout.com or on your favorite podcast service such as iTunes, Google, and Amazon Music. And be sure to check our Facebook page for updates. I'm Donna Schwartz-Mills with Carol Lee and Eliza Worthington, and we're saying goodbye for the Mamacrats. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Mama Cat's Mama Chat is part of the Demcast family of podcasts.